Good evening. This is Maestro Cretella with the Dawn of War 2 Retribution Elite Mod Cast. Today, we have a 3v3 on Argent Shelf Redux. Our first player is Void Weaver, playing as the Warp Spider Exarch. The Warp Spider Exarch is a teleporting hero. He does range damage, very good for harassing squads as well as harassing points for resource control. Also has some very interesting late game war gears that do some pretty interesting things. Next up, we've got Baxter456 as a World Eater's Chaos Lord. This is a Chaos Lord in Terminator armor. He has a Combi Bolter and a Demon Sword. So he does a little bit of range damage, a little bit of melee damage to start out. And you can upgrade him to kind of go in either direction, whether you want more range damage or more melee damage. Rather straightforward hero for tanking, doing damage, and applying pressure. Next up, we've got Madoka as a very interestingly colored Hive Tyrant. This is another tanky melee hero, very, very large, much even larger than something like a uh, Chaos Lord, and he can just walk right through the carcass of a tank. He starts out with no ranged weapons, but he's one of the tankiest of the tankiest melee heroes, and he also has some of the best starting melee damage as well as some of the best possible melee damage for a hero with his upgrades. On the other team, first off, we've got Max Power playing as a Tech Marine. The Tech Marine is, in my opinion, the best team's hero in the game. He is a Space Marine ranged hero. He can also get an axe, and he has guns for many different occasions, whether it's killing vehicles, killing heavy infantry, or uh, killing light infantry. He can also build relay beacons and turrets, and he can repair ve vehicles with the Blessing of the Omnissiah. Next up, we've got Batman! playing as the Force Commander. Force Commander is a tanky melee hero. He is not in Terminator ar armor or anything, so he can be knocked down and suppressed. He also does uh, disruption with Battle Cry, uh, buffing with Battle Cry, punching vehicles with a power fist, etc. And then finally, we have Super Hooper, playing as the Grey Knight Bro Captain. This one looks like just a Blood Raven's uh, scheme that Bro Captain. Bro Captain is also a tanky melee hero. He also wears Terminator armor, much like the Chaos Lord he's right next to, even though he appears to be a little bit smaller than the Chaos Lord. Um, but he doesn't do much in terms of melee disruption early on, even though he got a special attack there. So he's more about tanking uh, than about countering melee. Blue team looking like they came out slightly on top of that first engagement. Voidweaver, though, actually did not even capture the contested victory point, even though it looked like he kind of had the advantage there. Actually pushed up with his double dire Avengers and was able to destroy one generator. Meanwhile, here is Baxter's Chaos Lord, just again, just applying pressure, moving forward, and just scaring things off. And we actually have pretty much a full retreat from Super Hooper, retreating three squads because they were all being pressured by the Chaos Lord. I think he may have actually been able to keep them there a little bit longer, but this actually clears the way for Baxter's Chaos Space Marines to start bashing that generator, so they're going to take out another ge another generator. One squad of Chaos Space Marines already with Eternal War to give them a damage increase. Meanwhile, Void Weaver here is using... He used Fleet of Foot to run his Dire Avengers out of there. They were taking range damage, and he just kind of had them run out of there really fast to... It's like a pseudo-retreat or like a soft pedal, because he can actually keep them out on the field while still running away from a dangerous engagement and cutting his losses. Meanwhile, Interceptors must have teleported in since they are missing some energy, and the Chaos Lord gets scared off, but I mean... There is an entire army to fight him now. Baxter has some Raptors out on the field. This is a jump squad for Chaos. We'll suppress on landing rather than disrupt. You know, we've got some warriors from Madoka that are being chased down um, by these interceptors. Madoka, very interestingly, does not have any Termagants whatsoever. I don't know if he lost his Termagants or if he actually just did not build any Termagants and went straight into this warrior. And he's got warriors and Ravners. All right, meanwhile, we've got a combined Grey Knight and Space Marine blob in the middle, now being buffed by, I think, Battlecry just to bash this generator. Or, no, We Are the Hammer. Uh, rather premature, We Are the Hammer, just to... Well, I don't know what that was actually for, because it's just going to give them a defensive benefit. Anyway, this is a Tarantula turret from the Tech Marine, and uh, the Dire Avengers looked like they were about to get around the Tarantula turret arc. However, there's also a Devastator set up right here that's actually suppressing the Dire Avengers, and uh, somehow the Banshees also went, tried to go like up directly against that turret. 
And this is now, Max Power is definitely using some of the things that make the Tech Marines such a good team's hero. He has a turret, which is very, very powerful in Tier 1. A turret really can't be effectively countered in Tier 1, and usually the answers you have to a turret are either wait till Tier 2, when you can have better counters, uh, meanwhile double some of, or double or even triple some of the other players, or actually just triple the tech marine. But a turret, just it just really just isn't effectively countered in Tier 1. And uh, consequently, it's it's almost like not really a good not more than almost it's generally not a good idea to just try to headbutt against that turret uh, early on in the game. So right now the the that that section of the map is actually pretty much being abandoned, and the blue team is actually now choosing to engage in the middle. But much of the red team is here. We should see some heretic doom blast to give the blue team an advantage in this engagement. Blue team is actually now looking pretty strong in this engagement, but there's still a lot of reinforcements from the red team, in part because they're retreating right to this beacon, so they don't have to retreat very, very far, and they can get healing as well as reinforcements right from this beacon. And especially the combination of both the relay beacon and the turret is something that is just extremely, extremely powerful in team games. Uh, in part because one of the ways you deal with it in 1v1 is you just go somewhere else. You control the rest of the map. But that's much harder to do in team games, where the map is just a lot more cramped. Anyway, Raptors actually go down for Baxter, so he really overextended his Raptors trying to push against this turret. Devastators actually take a grenade to the face because they couldn't actually retreat away from it because they were going right to the relay beacon. But they don't even lose a model, and they're just going to heal up at this relay beacon. Meanwhile, Chaos Lord, oh, I was going to say, is going to go down, but he actually isn't. Or maybe is he, because he's still being overextended. Attacks, meanwhile, down to two models, and I think the Chaos Lord will actually be just fine. Meanwhile, double Chaos Space Marines are here. What are these Howling Banshees doing? They are way overextended. And so are these Dire Avengers. Oh, it looks like Void Weaver actually did manage to take out the turret, so that was good for him. But he still overextended a lot trying to push against this relay beacon. Uh, and he ended up... Oh my god, grenade! Doesn't do much. But anyway. He, lost, he actually lost two squads trying to push up against this relay beacon. Uh, and for the most part didn't achieve much. The most he achieved was he actually got... He actually got the victory point, but he lost two squads for it. And that's actually really not worth it. In fact, the red team... The blue team lost several squads, or, well, and by several I actually mean two. No, no, three, three. Because Void Weaver lost the Dire Avengers, he lost Howling Banshees, and then Baxter lost his Raptors, and a lot of that was trying to push up against this Relay V. So you really do have to be very, very careful about how you actually go about trying to deal with, with the Tech Marines' defensive buildings. Because they really are very powerful. You need to push very, very hard to actually take them out. Uh, and if you push too hard, when you aren't, aren't going to successfully take it out, you really can stand to lose a lot. Uh, we have a fully upgraded Warp Sweater Exarch. He has the improved Warp Generator, and that must be how he took out the, the Tech Queen turret, because that gives him the group teleport ability. He can teleport with several squads, including Howling Banshees. So it's definitely a potential turret answer, and I believe you can get that in Tier 1. Yes, you definitely can, because he's still in Tier 1. He's also got Heavy Gauge Death Spinner, very, very powerful against heroes, also improves the Warp Spider Exarch's damage, as well as the improved Targeters, which also improves his damage. So, Warp Spider Exarch actually gets pretty good range damage. I think actually, wow, that was five, six, six Hormagons that went down from that grenade. But yeah, Warp Spider Exarch can, I actually believe he can get the highest uh, piercing range damage, or piercing range DPS of any hero with this setup, with the Heavy Gauge Death Spinner and the improved Targeters. I believe he can also get the same, um, the same damage if he uses the Entangling Web Weapon. Anyway, Plasma Cannon Devastator setting up, but does get tied up by the Warp Spider, which is not very surprising. You know, Chaos Lord frequently overextending. I think this time the Chaos Lord will go down, and yes he does. Attempted Heretic War Speed Worship. Uh, to try to worship him to get the Chaos Lord moving faster so he can get out of there. Meanwhile, Interceptors get stunned, but they retreat out of there, and they lose a bunch of health, but no miles whatsoever. But here's... this is going to be very, very helpful for the red team. 
rather the blue team. They do have a Dreadnought. Meanwhile, on this side, we also do have a Dreadnought for max power from his tech race. And, oh, that's actually really, really bad positioning for Void Weaver. If he does not retreat this spot of Dire Avengers, he will probably lose it. And an extremely close call. He, the Dire Avengers get out of there with one mile. Warp Sweaters are also out for Void Weaver, and he is upgrading his Guardian Weapon Team to a Bright Lance. So that will give him something he, he can use against the Dreadnought, but I also think he's going to be lacking a little bit in actual in anti infantry fighting capabilities um, with his build and the losses he's taken. Back in the middle, the oh my god, Chaos Dreadnought actually took a missile shot and took a lot of damage. I think also because it took a took a Vindicare Assassin shot. Vindicare Assassin out on the field for Super Hooper. And that is definitely gonna do going to do some nice long-range damage against the Chaos Dreadnought. But the Chaos Dreadnought is now being repaired by the Heretics. And I like the, the positioning of the Chaos Dreadnought is very, very good and very conducive to keeping the Dreadnought alive while making it very, very oppressive because it's in a very far back position uh, and really just providing supporting fire for the rest of the army, which is probably the safest way to use a Dreadnought, which is why ranged Dreadnoughts generally last so much longer than ranged Dreadnoughts. Anyway, Assault Marines jump in to double chaos Space Marines really not a good choice considering there's also heretic support as well as a dreadnought that could force melee here is that ultra tanky and ultra powerful hive tyrant grenade went in i didn't even see where that went in but ultra tanky ultra powerful hive tyrant crushing claw with 108 dps heavy melee as well as the bonded exoskeleton for an, a health increase of 300 as well as the invulnerability ability that is a little bit of a mouthful but there it is here are the Walkers for the blue team, we do have the Tyrant Guard as well as the Cast Dreadnought. Tyrant Guard, only a super heavy infantry armor, but a larger health pool, and it can actually restore its health with the Shield Wall ability, which is something that was actually demonstrated in a recent cast of mine to be very, very powerful. A very, very nice Let the Galaxy Burn from Baxter. That's going to be generally a good choice against any kind of blobbing, but the... the Wow, the Chaos Lord does get taken out by that, that Bro Captain right there with a Sink Kill. Anyway, ooh, a very, very nice teleport by the Warp Spiders to not get hit by the Fist of the Emperor or the Emperor's Fist from the Dreadnought. Dreadnought now in a little bit of trouble. Howling ba new Howling Benches from Void Weaver are charging in. They need to actually go for something, though. I think they were suppressed by the Scouts, but now the Scouts are overextended. They're actually going to go for the Dreadnought. Even Well, no, now they're just going to take too much damage, and they need to retreat out of there before they get wiped. Uh, and Dreadnought goes down for max power. Ouch. VP is actually pretty even at 358 to 338. We've got some a Venom Brood that's moving up, probably helped to take out that Dreadnought, although it doesn't have that much experience considering it may have contributed to taking out a Dreadnought. Anyway, Warp Spiders, I think the squad of Warp Spiders probably should go soon uh, at half of its health and has lost a model. It's only going to lose more models if it stays in. Meanwhile, this Tyrant Guard now in a bit of a precarious position that may want to move out of there. It is kind of just right in front. There's definitely some potential anti-vehicle sources that can damage it, so it does start getting out of there. Meanwhile, the Bro Captain is about to charge the Chaos Dreadnought. It's not going to win that fight. And a very nice Ravener jump actually disrupts much of the stuff here, but there's still a few too many things here for these Raveners. And they are, they are going to start taking damage, and they do retreat, although the disruption it definitely did help. We've got the, t the Tech Marines or Relay Beacon is still up, so that's going to be pretty useful. Here is the Force Commander, fully upgraded, Thunder Hammer, Artificer Armor, and the Iron Halo. So he was in there disrupting Chaos Space Marines, but I think the, yeah, the ability is probably going to cool down. Are the Warriors going to go down? Very, very close call, but the, the Force Commander managed to get one more model in retreat. Anyway, here is that ultra tanky Hive Tyrant again, here completely unsupported. Um, unfortunately, he isn't actually doing much because he's definitely being kited uh, and things are being kept away from him. But it's amazing how he can just be there and not even die with just with this very, very tanky setup. Because he can be invulnerable for a period of time and since, he, since the Hive Tyrant also um, is immune to knockback, pretty much can't be... He, basically just needs to be avoided for the period that he's invulnerable. Uh, the only other option you really have is using a snare ability like the Robes of Torment or the 
Ooh, and here we have another... Um, here we have another group teleport, obviously, by Void Weaver to take out the Tech Marine's turret. So, a nice play, and especially with the Brightlands facing in that position, this should actually be a wipe on these Plasma Cannon Devastators if these Howling Banshees attack. They should be able to... Oh, a little bit of a misclick from Void Weaver, and he does not take out those how those those Devastators. Meanwhile, there's way too much of an army, and those Howling Banshees are now in trouble. Start taking a lot of damage. Void Weaver needs to get the heck out of there because he is being doubled, possibly even tripled. He's going to lose the Bright Lance, so some losses for Void Weaver. All right, meanwhile, here is that Chaos Dreadnought, which, by the way, this is actually a... Chaos Dreadnought. This is a World Eater's Chaos Dreadnought. So what a setup this is. The World Eater's Dreadnought. Pretty crazy. That is, of course, one of the new themes in the Elite Mod. Looks very, very nice. Wow. Okay, so that was the Overcharge, Plasma Overcharge ability from the Stormtroopers. Or actually, no, that was actually... I, I thought that was the Plasma Overcharge ability. That was actually the Plasma Can Devastators. I was going to say, if that ability from the Stormtroopers actually knocked them back in their feet, that would be pretty ridiculous. But it was actually Plasma Cannon Devastator. Anyway, Chaos Space Marine's getting dangerously low on health. Baxter needs to retreat this squad before he loses any more models yet. Actually has that squad down to only one model. He's got double... No, he's got one squad of Zinch Chaos Space Marines, one still plain. Maybe he'll actually get corn on the other one, although I don't actually think it would be a good idea. Maybe he's just spending money on other things, although actually he's not spending money. He still has a lot of resources in the bank. He's kind of floating at this point. All right. Chaos Dreadnought now potentially in trouble. A... Oh... That was, no, that was, must have been a psych out grenade, but a lot of things going on. Assault Cannon Dreadnought shooting at long range. Needs to be careful because it's now being chased by a Hive Tyrant with the Crushing Claw. I actually think it would be a better idea for the Hive Tyrant. Yeah, now, well, I was going to say focus on the Stern Guards since they would actually threaten um, the Hive Tyrant more. The Tyrant Guard, meanwhile, is up very, very far. I think the Tyrant Guard, definitely, Tyrant Guard is definitely now at risk for going down. Although I think the shield wall might be able to save it if enough support comes in for it. Anyway, Plasma Cannon Shot goes in, damages the Dreadnought, also knocks over the Plague Marines. Hive Tyrant goes down, so did a some kind of model. But yeah, this Tyrant Guard is now in a bit of trouble. I think it actually will go down because there is no support left for it. Even though it's regenerating a lot of health, it took a shot from the Vindicare Assassin. should also take a shot from the Tactical Marines or even something else. Yes, that's definitely a done Tyrant Guard. Meanwhile, back over here, looks like Void Weaver. wow, he kind of rushed to Tier 3 to get a D cannon. Um, that is going to help him certainly hold the point. He might be able to pull in these Stern Guard veterans inside that Singularity. He does actually manage to pull in the Stern Guard veterans, and I think managed to take out two, yeah, two models. Two models? Or just one? Well, either way, he pulled in the Stern Guard veterans on retreat with the Singularity. Um, D cannon could be helpful for having him control... Uh, having him control this victory point, but at the same time, I feel like he's going to need more actual fighting forces. Anyway, I think Tech Marine went down. Vanguard veterans for Batman um, jump on the Howling Banshees, and they do retreat out of there. Meanwhile, we do have a Strike Squad with a Psy Cannon. Very intimidating sound, but not actually that intimidating um, to go against. Meanwhile, Vindicare Assassin has pretty much had the Turbo Penetrator rounds loaded in this whole time. Uh, it is very versatile when it has the Turbo Penetrator rounds loaded in, since it can do high single damage, uh, high single shot damage uh, at long range to really anything. Will do more in anti-infantry damage if you switch to the Exodus rounds, but it, you just really get that versatility if you keep the keep the Turbo Penetrator rounds loaded in. Anyway, uh, we've now got, we've got both, let's see, who's here? It looks like a lot of things are here. Actually, this looks like a triple, to be honest. Triple? Triple, because we've got Inquisitorial Stormtroopers, we've got the Dreadnought from Max Power, and I think we've got enough stuff here that Batman is probably here too. Yeah, he's got Terminators. But Void Weaver, I think he really needs to cut his losses, get the heck out of here. It's not looking good. Teleport that Warp Spider Exarch away, uh, and do his best to support... Um, support this Swarm Lord from Madoka. Man, meanwhile, the D Cannon is actually in trouble now, being chased down by some Terminators from Max Power. Those Terminators are up pretty far forward, but this Swarm Lord, this is a Swarm Lord, and the Swarm Lord is a very, very tough and powerful super unit. 
a lot of staying power for the Swarm Lord because it can regenerate its health using the Leech Essence ability from all of these units around it. Meanwhile, I think the Dreadnought just might go down, being chased down by a Hive Tyrant. Swarm Lord actually going for the Assault Terminators, and I think that's going to be pretty good, although now a lot of these things are running out of support. The Hive Tyrant going really, really hard for the Dreadnought. Can he finish it off? Has, gets a special attack, so he doesn't actually kill that Dreadnought. He's going to... All right, he does get... He does manage to kill the Dreadnought. He probably will go down in a retreat for it, but I think that was actually worth it to take out the Dreadnought, sacrificing the Hive Tyrant to take out the Dreadnought. Meanwhile, VP's pretty even. Here is a Land Raider Phobos from Baxter. So we've got a bunch of super units for the blue team, and yet they're still getting pushed off. Meanwhile, Void Weaver not choosing to go for super units. Instead, he's getting the cheaper tier 3 units, like the D-Cannon and, and even a Fire Prism, which is hugely expensive on power, but it doesn't have the cost of a super unit. So red team actually very, very convincingly pushing up and really overpowering the blue team. But a very nice, uh, sneaky Chaos Lord is managing to keep the keep the blue team in this game on VPs. Anyway, uh, we've got Baxter and Madoka kind of just idling around here, maybe regrouping. They don't have all of their stuff here, and it looks like, yeah, they're trying to move out the rest of their forces so they can actually attack um, really at full strength. And I think they're going to need that against, really, against the red team army that's amassing right now. We do have now two, no, oh, a total of three Terminator variants on the field. So that's going to be very, very powerful. That's very, very tanky. Um, and also a lot of heavy melee damage. Plasma Cannon Devastator taking a shot at long range. It utterly disintegrates two heretic models. So heretics do unworship and get back out. Meanwhile, another shot goes in. Kind of scratches the Land Raider Phobos a little bit. Takes out 70 hit points out of 2,000. And we actually have a Generator Bash going on. Late game Generator Bash from Super Hooper. And, I mean, that's not going to be that threatening, but it does... It, it is going to draw the attention of the... I mean, it is going to draw the attention of the... The blue team, I think. Anyway, Dreadnought going off kind of on its own. I don't know why it's doing that. Uh, I think the Lane Raider Phobos is being very, very, very brazen. It needs to be very, very careful. Here is an Orbital Bombardment. Who is this Orbital Bombardment from? It is from... It has to be from Super Hooper. Yes, it's definitely from Super Hooper. Kind of catches some Chaos Space Marines in there. But here's a flank from Madoka. And although there's an Orbital Bombardment here, it didn't really didn't hit full on. And I think the positioning is actually going to favor the blue team. Or, yes. But now Baxter needs to actually push forward and support Madoka, who went for that flank. He needs to move up the Land Raider Phobos, move up the Double Chaos Space Marines. Even just having those Double Chaos Space Marines in there, they're going to do a ton of damage to the Paladin, so he really needs to move them up, unfortunately. Um, Baxter really not doing everything he could to support Madoka. Now he's moving, going to get those Double Chaos Space Marines in there, even though they only even though they only seem like two units. They are such a high damage dealer that they really are very, very valuable, especially against the heavy armor armies of the entire red team. We have a full power armor team from that entire red team. Pretty much a full space marine team, in fact. Anyway, Vanguard's jumping in. What are they doing? That is risky. I mean, they are going to be buffed by the Force Commander now. They actually take out one of these squads of Chaos Space Marines. They are actually pretty much dominating these Chaos Space Marines. They just have to be careful. So they were being buffed by the Force Commander who does have the Sacred Standard. And when he does have the Sacred Standard, uh, he will be giving a 25% damage buff in an area when he's alive. And when he's incapacitated, it will actually become a 40% damage buff. So those are actually some pretty scary vanguards as far as their damage. Anyway, uh, Max Power actually now taking back the contested victory point. He's, the red team still has the lead, and a lot of that probably does have to do with Max Power's control um, of the map with the Relay Beacon. The Relay Beacon is still alive, still alive. Meanwhile, some... Oh my god, is that... Wow, look at how close that Cyclone Missile Launcher actually came to taking out the Fire Prism. Nearly took it out. If just one more missile had happened to hit that Fire Prism, uh, that would have been a dead Fire Prism. I think this is finally going to be the end of this Chaos Dreadnought. I don't know why it was so overextended. Well, probably because it had the Mark of Corn. 
Um, so once it used the Blood Rage ability, it would not have been... It would have basically lost control. Anyway, it's being chased down, and a Missile Launcher Tax Squad actually finishes it off. The Space Marines are taking one of our resource points. Anyway, here is one of the late game warriors from the Orb Spider Extra. This is the Shimmer Orb. The Shimmer Orb creates this barrier that prevents all incoming and outgoing range damage. So you can use it late game, uh, especially in team games, to actually capture a point when you would otherwise take too much range damage. You can actually use it in the middle of engagement to capture a point or at least get the decap. Usually it doesn't last long enough to get a full cap, uh, but it does last long enough to get a decap and you either your opponent just either lets you get the point, or they have to close in for melee. A, I think a crack grenade went in on the land raider Phobos, but no follow-up. So I think the Phobos is disabled, but eventually it's, it, it will turn back on. Here it goes. If the Dirge Caster is not on cooldown, it should probably use it to stun these Terminators. But whoa, a Tyranna Formation from Madoka. And I actually think the Terminators might be in a little bit of trouble. They're taking heavy melee damage from the Swarm Lord. Last cannon shots from the Land Raider Phobos. These are all definitely good damage sources against Super Heavy Infantry Arm. Anyway, we've got a, uh, wow, a rather late Rhino um, from Super Hooper. We can't even see it because it's his, it's his seventh unit. Or rather his eighth, eighth if we include the Force Man. Anyway, Assault Terminator's probably going to go down for Batman. Close call, but yes, they do go down, being chased down by some Lightning Claw Assault Terminators from Baxter. And what else is going on? Here come the Paladins. The Paladins activating their ability, their new ability, the Holy Ground ability. But they actually now have to kind of run out of there before they really benefit from it. And we have a Vanguard model retreating to base, not even retreating to the Teleporter Relay Beacon. Because I think the Relay Beacon is actually now at risk for being overtaken, being pushed against by the Swarm Lord as well as the Land Raider Phobos supporting behind. I actually like the positioning of the Land Raider Phobos being behind the Swarm Lord. That was a Librarian using the Force Barrier ability. Anyway, now the Swarm Lord is actually a bit in trouble, kind of overextending. It still is penetrating from Leech Essence, but we also have some Raveners that are in here going after the, the Interceptors. They can't finish off the Interceptors, though. They don't really do enough damage. I don't think they did, or did they finish off the Interceptors? The Interceptors were finished off, so wow, Super Hooper just lost a bunch of stuff. Definitely lost a Rhino, which I don't know what the deal was with a Rhino, but it definitely wouldn't have much chance to survive long, very long against something like a Land Raider. Well, a Land Raider Phobos specifically, I actually mean, uh, since the Land Raider Phobos, if it actually brings both of its LAS cannons, it, both of its twin link LAS cannons to bear against the, uh, um, against the Rhino, it will actually take out about 370 out of its total of 500 hit points. So really, only two volleys from the Land Raider Phobos would actually take out the Rhino. So Rhino really does not have much survivability with a Land Raider Phobos around. Anyway, Paladins are charging in against the Land Raider, but I don't think that's a good idea. And yeah, they actually back off. Missile attacks take a shot, but the repair support for this Land Raider Phobos has actually been very, very strong to keep it alive. Now, blue team has the double cap. They are evening out the VPs. But the red team is actually getting a decap with some sneaky sniper scouts. Say that three times fast. Looks like something died here. <laughs> Not even quite sure what, but it looks like some inquisitorial stormtroopers. Yes, because Super Hooper, he definitely lost his first squad of stormtroopers. Meanwhile, some warriors here to stop that that uh that ninja cap from the snipe the sniper scouts um and they do stop it now they're chasing after the scouts that's not actually that exciting though meanwhile ooh, another cyclone missile bar launcher barrage goes in against this fire prism we've got two fire prisms from void weaver but it looks like he's been losing a lot of other units we know he's lost two squads of howling banshees he lost he's about to lose a ranger squad really really close and does not even like <laughs> retreat them so he loses a squad of rangers uh, meanwhile, he's also lost a D-Cannon, so he's definitely lost quite a few things. Now he's got double Fire Prisms, he's got a lot of power, but not a whole lot of requisition. Oh my god, this, this Doom of Malentai in a ton of trouble is now starting to retreat out of there. 
and it does manage to stay alive. We're gonna have some disruption. Oh no, what, what happened to these Ravners? I thought they were going to disrupt. Can they actually take the Vanguards with the For the Emperor buff actually do take out the Doom of Malentine on the tree. Very, very nice play. Um, the For the Emperor buff is a global ability from the Force Commander that he can use on really any squad. Uh, and it will make that squad do, I believe, 25% more damage. So use it on Vanguards to ensure that they could take out that Doom of Malentile and Retreat. Vanguards are now actually doing quite beastly, killing a Venom Brood model, although, I mean, not that the Venom Brood could actually really fight back much. Anyway, now we've got the Vanguard... The Vanguard. The Vindicare Assassin, of all things, actually up capturing this point. This is a little bit risky to, I think, have this, Van this Vindicare Assassin... Um, extended all the way this far forward since he is a pretty squishy unit you really want to try to actually keep him out of like you definitely don't want him getting into close quarters combat at all he needs to like get out of there immediately to be honest he's probably going to get wiped if the warriors turn and start attacking him is that going to be the end of the Vindicare Assassin? No! So unfortunately a misplay by Madoka he definitely could have taken out that Vindicare Assassin if only the warriors had attacked new Assault Terminators from Batman Meanwhile, the Land Raider Phobos, who, oh, and as it is, the Vindicare Assassin still almost got taken out, but he got pretty lucky. Anyway, here is the Brother Captain, actually switches to the Holy Armor of Titan. This is the Tier 3 Armor Warrior for the Bro Captain. You really don't see it a lot, though. Um, it actually gives him a very big health increase, 400, decreases his cooldowns by 30%, and it unlocks the Immortal ability, which can make him invulnerable. So, on paper, it does sound very, very good, although Brother Captain players actually get it very, very infrequently. Partly because it's Tier 2, uh, Tier 3, rather, so that that is a rather prohibitive characteristic. Baxter not responding to this orbital. He's probably going to lose the Squad of Chaos Space Marines. Let's see, does he? Yeah, Squad of Chaos Space Marines. Chaos Space Marines straight up wiped. But yeah, Bro Captain, you don't see this armor war gear very often. Um, and he, he does get that, get that Immortal ability, but it doesn't actually last that long. I don't think it lasts as long as other invulnerability abilities, such as the invulnerability from the Hive Tyrant or the Inquisitorial Mandate. Anyway, Lane Raider Phobos is now in trouble. It was using the Dirge Caster, but I think the Vanguards actually came in after, so they weren't affected, and it apparently wore off, and the, Van the Lane Raider Phobos actually went down pretty quickly, considering how long it was alive. Anyway, we've got a Predator now out for Baxter. Baxter also getting a new Lane Raider Phobos right away. One of the things that was, that's also a little disappointing about Baxter is that he has a massive red. He's floating so much red. 905 red. He could use an Imperial Abyss, and soon after the Imperial Abyss, pretty much as soon as it gets off cooldown, he would probably be able to use, an use another one. Or he could be using all the other, um, all the other Chaos Lord global, uh, global abilities, such as Bloodlust. There finally is that Imperial Abyss, right on top of the Bro Captain, but he actually does have the Immortal ability active, and that actually allows him to capture right through that point. So, one of the one of the few good uses of an Imperial Abyss is to use it as late game victory point denial. He used it for that purpose, but it actually got countered by one of the few counters to that, which is uh, an invulnerable hero. Because there aren't too many invulnerable heroes. Ooh, looks like something. A fire prism went down. Um, some Cyclone Missile Launchers went in to maybe attempt to take out the other one. He needs to get this D-Cannon out of there but it, before it also goes down. And a new squad of Rangers. So Void Weaver has definitely lost a lot of squads and bought a lot of new ones. I'm surprised to see one squad of late game Rangers and then a second squad of late game Rangers to give him, a, to give him another one. Batman saying, you forgot about the bacon. I think he means the beacon, not the bacon. And a very slight low in uh, this long, long, crazy game. We've got a level 4 Warp Sword, Exarch, level 3 Chaos Sword, level 8 Hive Tyrant. Now actually has the Warp Field in addition to, uh, to the Bonded Exoskeleton. Level 6 Tech Marine, a level 6 Force Commander, and a level 8 Brother Captain. Just thought I might check those while we had a slight low, but it's starting up again. Lightning Claw Assault Terminators have definitely been around for a while, but they are running out of this engagement while they still have three models. Actually, he's keeping them in. A little bit risky, but now he's trying to count on having their high, their extremely high damage with all this support. 
So, really crazy stuff here, but actually the, the red team actually just chooses to mostly abandon this engagement. Uh, in particular, it looks like Super Hooper pretty much just went into full retreat, whereas Batman's still just kind of backing up. And uh, Super Hooper actually just retreated straight to the... just retreated straight to the beacon again. Grenade goes in, knocks over some Raveners, does not do a whole lot of damage. And now, oh my god, we've got a bunch of, like, Space Marine stuff. I think the, yeah, the Assault Terminators, Batman's Assault Terminators, I think they have been getting eaten alive a lot. Meanwhile, we've also got some Grey Knight Terminators from Super Hooper. Grey Knight Terminators with their Power Melee Halberds. Uh, they will do Splash, and but they won't do quite as much damage as Lightning Claw Terminators, although they do have a bit more health, so kind of an acceptable trade-off. VP is in favor of the red team, 56 to 102 with a one-to-one -one cap. Meanwhile, we do still have this, you know, I, I figured it out now. The late game Rangers is actually to site for things like the D cannon as well as the fire prism, but it does seem like Void Weaver is just getting pushed back because I think he's investing too much in like artillery and non-fighting and not, not so much, oh, and he doesn't even move the fire prism, loses it to another cyclone missile launcher barrage. And uh, overall Void Weaver, well, unfortunately, it doesn't look like he actually did that well. He's really lost so many things. Now he's getting pushed against by max power in his lane. He does have the Warp Spider Exarch. He is managing to keep the point, though, but his unit preservation has not been great, and he's really lost a ton of squads in this game. Baxter has definitely also lost a ton of squads. Well, actually, I don't think he's lost as much as Void Weaver. He hasn't bought as many, though. Anyway, we've got new Chaos Terminators, so two squads of Chaos Terminators. One, I think, inside the Land Raider. The other one, in its vanilla form, so just with their 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 combi bolters. Which will do a lot of range damage. Well, actually, these... Right now, I actually feel like this particular squad of Terminators, they are upgrading to the Lightning Claws, and I think without the Lightning Claws, they would not actually be that great. So they would really not be actually be doing great damage to things like these these super heavy infantry terminators or all these leveled up heavy armor squads like the vanguards and the tactical marines. Meanwhile, what is going on right here? We've got Madoka ca trying to capture it with the Venom Brood, actually trying to force melee with the Venom Brood. Ends up losing two models, so here are his Gene Stealers and his Raveners. The Raveners do a short range burrow to disrupt the scouts, actually gets the scouts off the point, and there is um, the Shotgun Blast. Super high damage coming out of these Gene Stealers. They do a ton of damage, and here is a Strike Squad. I think the Gene Stealers, even without their melee synapse, they should be able to eat the Strike Squad alive. Even a level 4 Strike Squad. Even with a, a Strike Squad... Yeah, oh, what is that now? That is some marked target on the Raveners. Raveners taking a ton of ton of damage. So are these Gene Stealers. Gene Stealers trying to chase after these Stern Guard veterans. Gene Stealers trying to use their Adrenal Rush to restore health but they are also taking a ton of damage. And we actually now have the, who is actually, we can't actually tell which one of these units is actually capturing this point right now. I can't tell whether it's the Tech Marine or the Grey Knight Terminators. They might actually both be selected to capture the point, but only one of them can actually capture at a time. We have some Let the Galaxy Burn coming in. Oh, it's the Terminators capturing that point. And the, and the Chaos Lord actually just goes down doing that. Uh, as good as that ability is, it's not going to be that great against Paladins and Terminators, and it won't stop them from getting a cap. So it's actually a double cap for the red team. And another Swarm Lord out of Madoka, as well as double Gene Steelers. And he's still trying to push for this Relay Beacon that has been here all game. Meanwhile... <laughs> Here is some sneaky Warp Spider Exarch play again, but now he is being targeted by some kind of melee unit. The Gene Stealers resume the cap for him, but they are in trouble now. They will get the decap, but they will probably go down in retreat, taking so much damage. All right, Gene Stealers, will they go down on retreat? I think if just the Terminators start turn and shoot the Gene Stealers, they will take them out. So Gene Stealers actually make it out alive. One to one cap, but the blue team, or the red team rather, is about to get a cap. Unless what is going on? We have an orbital bombardment. Seems to be missing pretty much everything, but certainly scaring Void Weaver off. About to be a double cap for the red team again. So that's probably going to be the victory points in their favor, possibly the game in their favor. Unless we can have some, some sneaky scouts. No, no. Oh, wait, some sneaky scouts are for the red team, so... And the Vindicare Assassin also decapping that point as well. So this is finally looking like it's going to be the game in favor of the red team. Even with a Land Raider Phobos and, uh... 
a uh, Swarm Lord right here. Yes, that will undoubtedly at this point be the game for the Red Team. Alright, that got pretty crazy at the end. I hope you enjoyed the cast. Have a good night.